Hi everyone and welcome to the French Watch Collector. Today on the bench, we have a very old French watch, a Yema. Uh, you see the watch is a bit uh, beaten up, but uh, let's see what we can do and to restore this uh, beautiful watch. You see the crystal is scratch. Uh, we're gonna check if the, the watch is working. First, we're gonna wind it, uh, give it a full wind. It's, an, it's not written automatic on a watch, so it's probably a manual, but we see when we wind it fully, it should come to a stop. Yeah, that's it, I'm fully wind now. So yeah, it's a manual watch. And you can see the sub-second end now is running. So the watch is working when we adjust the time. Yep, that looks good. The hands are turning. See the bezel as well is a bit worn. The case is uh, chrome like it's, yeah, you see at the back, it's pretty worn. And actually the owner of the watch didn't want to, to redo the case. He just wanted to leave it like this. So we're gonna do a, a full service on the watch. Um, probably like see if we can do something about the crystal because yeah, the crystal is not in good shape. Gonna remove the bracelet now just to start working on the watch. And yeah, that's a funky bracelet as well with this uh, very 70s or 80s style uh, bracelet, yeah. So I'm just gonna remove both sides, which is the original bracelet with the Yema on the, on the clasp there. And uh, first I'm gonna check how well the watch is running. And when I put it on a typographer, you see the amplitude is very low, around 180. And you see some jump as well. Uh, it's, it's losing like 13 seconds a day. The beat error is good, but yeah, the amplitude is very, very low. And it's running very strangely, like with some jumps. So yeah, I definitely need a, a service on this watch. So first I'm gonna open the case back. And you can see in the description down below some tools that I'm using in the video. So if you have any question on uh, on the tools or anything else that, uh, that I do in a video, don't hesitate to put some comment down in the description. I would be very happy to reply to your, to your questions. And there we go, we open the watch and look at the beautiful movement inside. It looks okay, yeah, it's uh, not bad, it's, it looks clean. We'll see a bit later which type of movement is that. Just removing the ring around that keeps the movement in the case. So I'm gonna free up now the winding stem. And we should be able to turn and release with this beautiful die with the caliber underneath. Just placing back the winding stem there. This one is uh, kept in place by a screw. Just need to give a couple of turns just to make sure the waning stem is tight. Perfect. There we go. Just gonna remove the hand with my Presto tool there. So we have the minute and hour hand in the center. And obviously you see on this model, you will have a, a small sub-second hand at the, at the bottom there on the dial. Just gonna protect the dial again. And this time I'm gonna use a pair of lever there just to lift up the small sub-second hand there. Perfect. The dial is actually in very, very good condition. So yeah, that's why you just need to make sure you always protect the dial when you remove your hand, just not to scratch it or to remove paints or do anything wrong with the dial. Now just release the dial fist screw there and we should be, should be able to lift the dial. Perfect. Just gonna store it in this box. It will be nice and safe. And we can start the disassembly on the movement. Removing the cannon pinion there again with a Presto tool. But gonna remove the power which is inside the movement now, just to make sure like, basically now it's like a ticking bomb. Yes, there is a lot of energy in it. And uh, when you disassemble a watch, you just want to make sure there is no energy or else you will damage some parts. You might damage some parts during disassembly. So that's why you want to remove all the power inside the watch. So now when you see the balance came to a stop when the power is fully removed, removing the top jewels there from the balance, with the chaton which is inside there. You see that we get cleaned separately in a cleaning machine a bit later on. And now we're gonna do, we're gonna disassemble all the mechanisms, starting by the balance assembly there, which is very fragile. And you can see there's a sign FE with the number. 
that's actually the caliber reference, which is a, a France et Bosch, yeah. And you see the number of the of the caliber. Uh, obviously, it's a company that doesn't exist anymore, France et Bosch, but yeah, they um, they made like a, a lot of caliber, especially uh, 60s, 70s, 80s. And I think like a lot of brands like during the 80s and uh, in 90s with the quartz crisis, uh, unfortunately, they went uh, bankrupt. So the... the the brand doesn't exist anymore, and like many many uh, Swiss and French brands that produce uh, calibers or even watches, uh, yeah, they suffer during the 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 quartz crisis. But yeah, it's a very very good brand. You will see like uh, obviously like Yema being a French brand, they use this uh, French manufacturer uh, uh, for the calibers. Uh, but yeah, they are great uh, calibers, like like on par with ETA and other brands, very solid. Um, and obviously, like you, you, you find them in a lot of uh, watches from this uh, from this era. Okay, so now I'm going to remove carry on the D assembly with this bridge here. We have the barrel assembly underneath that I'm going to remove there. We'll disassemble it later. That's why we have the big spring that keep all the power from the watch. the train of wheel bridge now I'm removing like it's in a name underneath we have obviously the train of wheel which is all these wheels which are interconnected to each other well we are gonna remove each single one and I'm moving to the die side where we're gonna disassemble the keyless work which is very nice on this watch actually I love the color and uh, of these uh, parts which are like a bit blue like I don't know it's kind of a special steel uh, looks very solid actually uh, on this on this part just gonna release there the screw which is keeping the setting lever in position there we go that's the setting lever there just last few parts with the clutch and a winding pinion. Okay, I'm gonna remove now the jewels, which is on a, on a die side. You remember we did the one on top of the balance, and that the other one on the on the other side of the movement. Just gonna grab the jewel there, and uh, it's gonna get clean in the machine. I'm gonna peg all the jewels again like from the movement and all the different bridge, just to remove any dried up oil or grease. Make it easy when we put it in a cleaning machine a bit later on, just to clean all these jewels. And I'm placing back the balance because yeah, that's a safe place. You see like this little spring there, the hairspring is very, very fragile. So you just want to make sure that it doesn't get damaged during cleaning. And a safe place is to put it back on the a, on a, on a main plate. We drew a light polish on the pivot point of all the wheels, again, just to remove any dried up oil or grease to get back a nice amplitude on the watch because we saw the amplitude was very low. And amplitude, uh, the friction in a watch is your enemy and it's ruining your amplitude. So that's why now I just do a light polish on this pivot point there just to make sure they are as smooth as possible. And I'm disassembling the barrel assembly Again, just to make sure everything is clean, gonna remove the barrel arbor. And obviously the huge spring which is inside. Taking out the barrel arbor now. Perfect. And that's the spring where you keep all the power when you wind the watch. Keep all the power in a in a in a barrel there. Just a long one. There we go, perfect. Looks quite good actually, the spring, the shape. And I'm gonna put all the parts that I disassemble in little baskets, and these baskets will go in a, in a cleaning machine. Again, to make sure all the parts are clean, remove the dried up grease, oil, dirt. And uh, when we put it back together, we have a movement which is as clean as possible. There we go, so now we're gonna start the cleaning. So we go through one solution, which is a, a rinsing solution, a cleaning, sorry, first, and two rinsing. And the last part will dry uh, all the parts. And I would like to use this opportunity to tell you that I have a, a Patreon page. 
so you can go find the, the find the page in the, in the description of this video. And I would like to thank my patron, Matt, Christian, David, Shelby, Jan, Christian, Corne, Alan, David, Ted, Tony, Michael, Stephen, John, Tim, and Gregory. Thank you so much, guys, for supporting me. If you want to join the group, like I said, there is a description down there. And you subscribe to one of the plant, it will help me a lot uh, to support the channel and put better content down there. So if you have any question, again, just put some, uh, put it in the comments and I will be very happy to reply to your, to your questions. Okay, so now the parts are clean, rinsed and dried. So we should have like uh, nice parts ready to get back to the, on the movement. But first, we're gonna focus on the case. Gonna remove the bezel there, just using a blade just to go underneath and lift it up. Oh, that's very dirty underneath. Just gonna remove the spring that keeps the bezel in, in position. You see, there is no click on this bezel. It's just like a turning, like a smooth turning bezel. Uh, but yeah, this spring help, help to retain the, the bezel in position in a groove. You see the amount of dirt underneath. So obviously all these parts will go in uh, in an ultrasonic machine. Just need to remove the crystal first. For so this, I will use my custom press from Orotech. Again, I will put a link down in the description. If you want to, to buy this uh, custom tool from Orotech, they are great, great tools. Now the crystal is removed. She's pretty beaten up the crystal and yeah, it's quite special as well. It's a double, um, yeah, like a two-sided crystal. It's very thick as well. So I, I still want to keep the original crystal. So we see what we can do later on with this, uh, with this crystal. And now I'm removing as much dirt as I can and uh, we put all this part a bit later on in a ultrasonic machine. Okay, so now the parts are clean. I'm just gonna do a epilem treatment on a few parts. You see there's the jewels for the balance and the pallet fork and the escape wheel. So this will help the oil that I'm gonna put a bit later on to be uh, retained in a better position with this uh, epilem. It's a surface treatment that they will put on the parts. I'm just gonna dry the parts now and remove the epilem from the pivot point on the escape and the pallet fork. And you see the jewels there, they are different, different size, different thickness. You see this one is much bigger like the one I have in my tweezers. And actually when you have a, a bigger jewels, that's the one that go on top of the balance. Um, because obviously like the top of the balance, you know, when you wear your watch, um, the balance is pointing down. Um, so yeah, you will have more gravity if you want on, on these jewels. That's why they put always a thicker jewel or more solid jewels. And the thinner one go on top, go on the dial side. So you see this one is thinner, the jewel on top there. So this one we go on the dial side. That's where I put the thick one. Just close the spring on top of it. And that's a thin one that go on a, on a dial side. Again, putting the spring in position. Just closing there. There we go, perfect. Just shaking with some air if the Balance is beating nicely, turning, no friction. The air spring needs to be fully flat as well and can be adjusted if needed, but in this case, this was perfect. Okay, so now I'm gonna rewind the mainspring. So I'm using a, a winder from Bergeon there where I'm putting the mainspring and I'm gonna fully wind it there. This is a manual spring you see at the end if you have an automatic, you will have a different shape at the end. And this one, you see that there is a, a tiny little tongue at the end that will come and hook on the inside of the barrel to stop the winding. And I just need to put this little hook back inside the winder there. There we go. Just gonna give it a couple of turn, put it inside, and now I can unwind. and remove these top parts with the handle there. And inside we should have a fully one mainspring. 
that will be ready to go back inside the barrel. Yeah, you see inside there? Perfect. Okay, we're gonna put some grease at the bottom of the barrel there to help lubrication with the with the mainspring. And gonna pop in the mainspring. Perfect. You can put the boil arbor there. Grease on the top. And I'm gonna close the barrel arbor. And for this, I'm gonna use a special tool, which is very simple, but very efficient. I'm gonna put the barrel and just press gently on it and we'll close the top lid there. Perfect. Okay, so now we're gonna focus on reassembling the train of wheel. You see I'm putting each wheel in a different pivot point there. Just need to make sure it's aligned, perfect. And a big one that go right in the center. So now we put all the wheel on the bottom jewels and I'm gonna put the bridge with the top jewel there. Just need to make sure it's aligned again with all the pivot point. So you go very gently there because you don't wanna bend the pivot point so you need to be very, very gentle. Don't wanna use any strength. And look at it. Wow, it went straight away, he's in. Like all the jewels perfectly line up with the pivot points on the top. So when it's done, I can secure the bridge with the screws. And let's check if it's running freely. Yeah, that looks nice. Yeah, perfect. Gonna lubricate the barrel arbor, which is inside the barrel assembly there. So that's the bottom part. Just gonna insert it there. Gonna lubricate the top part here. I like to do it this way. I like to oil the mainspring uh, barrel assembly after being assembled. Like that, I know the oil where it goes because before I was doing it, uh, before putting the putting together, but this way I think it's better and the oil will go right in a groove. It doesn't go everywhere. And there I'm lubricating again the contact point with the bridge, putting the crown wheel with the screw there in the center, which is means it's river threaded. So you need to be really careful, especially when you take it apart. As it is river threaded, you need to unscrew it the other way around. And if you don't careful, and if you screw my threads, you will ruin the thread. So that's why you need to be very careful with the with the crown. Uh, with the screw when you have only one screw in the middle. And the ratchet wheel there with the big screw. And here I'm gonna hold all the pivot point, again, just to make sure the friction is minimum. Before the pivot point, you see me there, I, I oil as well the pivot point of the barrel, the barrel arbor on the other side. And now I'm gonna Assemble the keyless work, putting some grease here between these parts because see a lot of tension uh, in a keyless work. So the, the friction is even higher with the tension. So that's why we use this blue grease. The setting lever that I need to screw from the other side, that's always a tricky process when the, the setting lever is uh, screwed in position with a screw which is on the dial side, a uh, balance side, sorry. You see now on the other side, I hold the setting lever in position and I screw it in place. Perfect. Gonna oil all the pivot point there again. We're gonna put some wheels a bit later on. Now putting the yoke with the yoke spring, I'm gonna put a bit later that will put a tension, that's a spring, strong spring in general, that will put a tension in this part of the mechanism and that's why we use this grease because the tension is high, so the friction is uh, even higher. There we go, now I put everything, see I put the yoke and the tension with the spring there, that looks good. Put the cannon pinion, friction mounted there, so gentle push on it, put it in position, the minute wheel, 
And last but not least, the setting lever spring on top there. Last grease on the setting lever spring and just check if everything is working. You see there, yeah, we have the two position on the watch, winding and adjusting the time, so that's good. Putting the pallet fork. You see I'm gonna oil as well the pallet fork, but it's always tricky to film it on the camera, the oiling of the pallet fork, so I always do it off camera. Just center the jewels. Yeah, that's good. Can secure it now with a with a screw. Yeah. Putting a, a wind, just checking if the power is coming through the train of wheel from the and to the pallet fork. And the pallet fork is clicking there, so it means the power is coming, so that's good. So now we can install the balance. Give it a quarter of a turn there, just bring it in position on top of the caliber. Yes, yes, you want to start. Oh, it's still not in position, not fully yet. But we saw he wanted to start already. Yeah, that's it. Now it's in position. Just give it a quick impulse. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. Movement is running. Check a bit later on or where it is running, yeah. Yeah, it looks good. It looks uh, beating quite nicely. So I'm gonna put uh, our wheel, a little spring there on top and can put back this beautiful dial. It's quite in good shape, this, uh, this dial. Just gonna, I did not touch it. I'm just gonna obviously blow it and just use, clean it ever so slightly with a bit of Rodico to remove any uh, dust or dirt. Putting the our hand in position. I'm gonna put the minute hand. There we go. And the last one, this tiny, tiny, small sub-second hand. Perfect. Okay, so now I'm gonna clean all the parts like from the case and bracelet in my uh, ultrasonic cleaning machine. Uh, a lot of people I'm uh, asking which type of machine I'm using. And actually I put a link down below in the next, next video where we do uh, a review on the machine. And uh, I managed for you guys to, to get a 5% discount on the machine. So you can find the link down below and the code to use if you want to order this uh, ultrasonic cleaning machine. Uh, very nice one. Perfect for for watch uh, for watchmaker if you are like uh, obese. It's not an expensive machine, so you can go there and uh, and have a look. See the crystal is pretty scratched here, and uh, yeah, I wanted to keep the original crystal, so I'm going to polish it with my polishing machine using a, a very light compound and uh, buffing wheel. I'm just gonna polish, and you will actually take quite a lot of time, like when it's a lot of scratches like this, because you want to go very slowly. Just gonna speed it up a bit. And uh, you will see at the end, the result is quite nice uh, on this on this crystal. Uh, very happy with the, with the end result. Just gonna do a polish by hand inside, because there was some scratches inside the crystal as well, probably from a previous operation. Uh, so there, I'm gonna use a bit of poly watch. It was very light scratches. So I'm using a bit of poly watch to, to polish uh, the inside of the crystal. Okay, so now the crystal is polished. I can place back this uh, inner ring. And uh, again, I'm gonna use my press just to press the crystal in position. Perfect. And now we have beautiful clean dial and I'm gonna Put the case back with the crystal you see like no scratches anymore even it was a bit yellow like the crystal and now it's perfectly clear again and uh, with beautifully clean and uh, looking good this caliber inside putting back the winding stem first i'm gonna put the ring that will center the caliber in uh, 
in the case and I can uh, why well, here we go push the set the crown there and uh, now it's nicely and secure so we're gonna put a new o-ring obviously this one is a, a diving watch uh, but uh, yeah obviously vintage watches is not uh, advice to go diving with vintage watches but always good to put like new o-ring and seal to make sure your watch uh, is uh, watertight as much as possible. There we go. And Yema actually did a lot of uh, diving watch. They did a lot of great watch as well. Some uh, rally graph, some chronograph watch, some uh, uh, yachting watch as well. Uh, yeah, the, the, the brand was created actually in 1948, a French brand. Uh, they did some range for, the, for some uh, watch for the French Navy, uh, for pilots. They went as well for for astronaut. They did a lot of watches. Uh, unfortunately, in the 80s, he, he went a bit uh, bankrupt. He got even bought by Psycho and after a lot of few other brands. Uh, and now, actually, Yema is back uh, producing uh, some, I think, nice watches. And with their uh, own, they just created a micro rotor caliber, which looks very nice. Um, so yeah, I'm very happy to see another French brand coming back, obviously with a lot of history and very pride, proud to work on, uh, on this uh, old watch, uh, making it looking good again, working fully. Obviously, we check on a time grapher uh, how well it ran now. Just going to close the case with my uh, tool again from Orotech. I will put a link down below in the description. Uh, very nice tool to close and open case back. Just gonna demagnetize the watch. And I would like to use the opportunity to tell you that I have my own website where I'm selling some of the watch, talking about the channel, and as well tell you if you want to restore your watch. Uh, this is some of the watch that I'm selling and uh, that I restored on the channel. So if you find see a watch, you can go there and have a look. I propose a service if you want, me to, if you, want you to, to send me your watch for a service you can go there and contact me on the website. I will be very happy to help you. Okay, so this is the result on a time grapher. Obviously the watch will need to run and the oil need, will need to go like uh, nicely in uh, uh, places where you need to go. But you see the amplitude went back up to around 260, it was a 180. Uh, it's just gaining like six seconds a day. Uh, so that's pretty good for this type of uh, vintage watches. So very happy with the result. I will let it run for a few days on this winder just to check it's uh, working perfectly and the oil go everywhere. Uh, so yeah, I hope you like the restoration on this beautiful Yema. Me, I enjoy working on this watch and I see you next time for the next restoration. Bye bye.